Welcome to the How Do I Do This podcast. I'm Alicia Levels Moore. I'm so excited that you guys are back with us again today. So this How Do I Do This podcast is hosted right here at Polaris BHM and powered by Harvest House Media. And we could not be more excited to have another guest with us today. But before I jump into our guest, I want to always share what the purpose and the mission and vision of this podcast is. This is not two talking heads. We're not spewing out information. Our purpose and goal here is to always make sure that we provide tangible insights on how to do stuff. Because when you have an idea, when you're launching your next thing, you're launching a new product, you're like, okay, how am I going to do this? And you really wish you had a community and tribe of people who were truly willing to share information with you and not be so stingy. So I like to have conversations around really how do you do it? What did you do? Who did you talk to? Who you send the email to? Give us all of the tea. So today I have the pleasure of being here with Kayla of Donji Media. And not only is she the owner of Donji Media, but it's really special for me to have people who are connected to the Polaris community to also be here on the podcast because this is what it's all about. So now, Kayla, don't cut up today, okay? Look at that. Now, that's why you invited me. Okay. <laughs> so, listen, me, me and Kayla be going back and forth. So, mm-hmm. one of the things I really, really want to jump into um, is I want people to hear a little bit more about your story. Right? So, I think a lot of us, we see people kind of operating their gifts. We see them operating their businesses. But we don't know how did they get to that point. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and so, sometimes the, the barrier from people getting started is feeling like, well, I mean, how that's well, she did that. Or he did that. Like, that's not possible for me. But a lot of times, it's like, no, if I really told you the story it's quite ghetto and you know what i'm saying you probably would find more relatable facts right in our stories because like my grandmother my angelo always used to tell me is that we are more alike than we are different okay and so and that's that also is not something that's up for debate and, and so okay i think that when we share our stories that we're able to find a lot of similarities but most of the time we can't find them because we're not sharing those stories so tell us a little bit about yourself right how you got started and then we're going to hop into your company and what you all do cool cool so first of all thank you for having me um i know we be Cutting up outside <laughs> of the studio, so it means a lot that you was willing to bring the foolishness yes. in front of the camera. Okay, I want people to see who you really are. You know, I love that. I love that too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like she said, I'm Kayla. So I currently live in Birmingham, but I am from Montgomery, okay. the Gump, three three four. Okay. Um, and so how I got started, I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's real unfortunate, mm. but um, went to film school. Went to film uh, UAB majored in film production, and graduated, of course, went through the um, I in the real world jobless depression, worked at a tech startup, and then got a job at a news station. Okay. Um, while I was at the news station, I was feeling a little convicted because my dad had spent all this money on a laptop and a camera for me while I was in film school, and I wasn't using it. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to maybe do photography on the side so that I'm making use of this stuff. Um, but... You know, what I knew about myself was very quickly reconfirmed, which was I can't multitask. Okay. Um, but I was getting some video gigs and projects, and um, I hated my job. And so went on vacation, came back, and was like, y'all, I don't want to go back. Mm. And I told my parents, I was like, y'all, I can't multitask. I'll never know if I could truly make this thing into a company unless I go all the way in. I think the the general advice is... Make your side business profitable before you leave your job. And I think that is very gener- very good, solid advice. Yeah, for sure. But that's just not how I function. Um, and I was, what, maybe 24 at the time? And mm-hmm. I was like, I'm still on y'all insurance. Um, I'm young enough to totally mess this up and still jump back into a real career and mm-hmm. not have my life ruined. So I got to do it now. So I quit my job. With my job, my dad gave me $5,000, um, which was going supposed to cover my rent for maybe... Four or five months. Mm-hmm. Um, so we could see where this thing would go. So started Donji Media officially September 5th, uh, 2018. And of course, it was out there grinding. It was hard. I'm an introvert. Um, I'm cool, but I ain't friendly. <laughs> so that was a problem, right? Like having okay. to talk to people I didn't know, trying uh-huh. to figure that stuff out. Um, but I had made a lot of really good connections with like professors at school, friends and stuff. So I was trying to nurture those relationships, did some entrepreneur programs here in the city. Um, 
of course, and then by January, you know what I'm saying, that little five grand my daddy gave me was back gone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you young, your, your permanent address is your mom in them house. So some of my overdraft notices had gone to the house in Montgomery. And my mom was like, ma'am, girl, please buy you something to eat. Um, and then February 2019, mm-hmm. literally this time, 2019, my mom... Goes to the hospital for a mini stroke. My, my folks older. Um, went to the hospital for a mini stroke. That turned into a full stroke. She had had a, um, a heart attack some years ago. Heart failure. Pancreatic cancer had spread to the... Like, it just went downhill in two weeks. And then she was gone. So, started my company September 2018. February 2019, mom went to the uh, hospital. March 2019, mama did. Mm. So, of course, I'm like... Well, this ain't good. But I will say the only silver lining was that if I was working somewhere, because I spent every single day of them last 14 days of her life with her. If I was working at a job, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I still felt very confident that that was the right choice for me. Like, I was still on the right path. But this was a barrier that I'm like, don't know about this. Um, Was able to get back to work in April, got back up here. And some of those relationships I built started paying off. Yep. Folks was reaching out, wanting to start work. Um, one of my my very first really big clients was uh, one of my old professors from UAB who, when I went to UAB, she was just an adjunct professor teaching like women's studies. And she hit me and she was like, yeah, we need some help. I, need, I want you to stop by. And I'm thinking like, okay, maybe she run like a, she's like the um, faculty person for a student award. I get mm-hmm. that now. Homegirl, executive director of a federally, federally funded grant. Oh, wow. And I'm her, her her office had a conference room in it. And I'm like, girl, when you came up like this? <laughs> but she wasn't playing no games by me. She was like, yeah. anything, you know, I was a great student. I was somebody who was about my stuff. And so anything I told her I could do, she believed that I could do. And she brought me in. And I got my first um, contract with UAB that way. I became a UAB vendor very early on. Um, was able to do really great work with them for a very long time throughout the duration of that grant. And things just kind of started Snowballing from there. Like basically just cashing in on relationships. Yeah. I had really great relationships with professors, um, had made relationships with some of the people in the community through like the documentary work, and it just kind of started paying off. And in 2020, it snowballed. Because mm. everybody was like, oh, we're supposed to be on the internet? That part. And I'm like, yeah, you should have been on the internet. Mm. But it's okay, because we can get you on the internet this year. But yeah, that was, that was really... Man, so, okay, so there's so many things that came up in my mind when you were talking. So a, a few things, right? So, okay. You like, listen, I cannot do this. I know that there's something I want to do. And I think it's important for us to make the distinction between what we do want to do and what we don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think too many of us continue to do things we don't want to do until we find ourselves so far gone that we really can't turn back because so much of our lives, our identities, our livelihood is wrapped up in things that we absolutely hate. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that that's important to also note, like, you know, in your body, in your spirit, like what feels right to you and what feels wrong. But I think most of the time we don't, the thing that we feel like I'm supposed to do, I don't know how to monetize it. Right. Mm -hmm. So people don't know how to monetize it. So therefore it, it can't be possible for me or it can't be something that's an option because I don't know how to monetize it. But I think when we give ourselves the opportunity to try, we see that really that's where the money comes from. The first step Mm -hmm. right but if you spend all the time ideating over why it won't work or why can't make money then like you won't ever make that leap so you you took that leap you felt in your body what felt right to you and you made the best decision for yourself and so I I think that that's really really important like I want to kind of put a pin right there too because even for myself currently in business I'm in this process of as I do things for clients I'm like I don't like the way that feel Mm mm-hmm I'm going to stop offering that service. Mm-hmm. You know, I had somebody say something to me one time that was so helpful. They said, make sure when you're building your business and you're determining like your services and your offerings that it nurtures you too. You know, and so I think sometimes we get caught up doing stuff that we don't like. So you take the risk. you like, listen, take the risk. Dad, listen, P.O.P., hold it down. We love that. Showed up, right? 
and you you went ahead and you jumped out there. So what was the first thing you do? Did you get your LLC? Did you go get your business license? Like, what does that process look like? Because there are some people, they can't get between the idea to actually being a fully functioning entity. So what did you, did you, because most time people are like, write a business plan. So what, what did you do from, okay, I'm going to start this company full throttle. Now, what do I need to do to make sure it's legit? Because there are certain things that have to be in place before you can get a UAB contract, mm -hmm. before you can become a vendor, right? Mm -hmm. There are some some different things and different boxes you have to check off. So what did you do from a kind of logistical, strategic, I need to have my ducks in a row. So when the money come in, I'm prepared to actually take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, very first thing I did was got my LLC, which is why I can say the business's birthday was September 5th because that's when that's the date they marked on my paper. Um, did that and did the LLC by myself. I know some people will go through a lawyer, which you can do, but it is really simple. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. Um, and then because my work was creative, I, I knew I needed a, a lawyer to write my contract. So, okay. um, had a conversation with one lawyer, um, and I think it's cause she was fairly new, but she was like talking like a five grand retainer. And as you know, only had five grand to live. So I was like, I can't do that. Um, talked to one of my other friends who, um, was, is a creative and she was like, yeah, I know this guy who he's done my contracts. I'll send you to him, send me to him. And he was like, yeah, um, I can do this. And I have this kind of discount for first-time business owners. So he charged me like seven hundred dollars for like four or five different contracts, mm. um, which amazing, right? Yes, for and, sure. and that was how I got started. Like the the LLC and those contracts. Um, eventually, did do the the Birmingham City licenses, the Jefferson County licenses. Um, but the main thing was the LLC, and then I got into a entrepreneur program. Unfortunately, it's not. I don't think it's around anymore. But Operation Hope mm -hmm, mm -hmm. had an entrepreneur training program that I got into, and and so through that we did um, the business plan and just a lot of the other like like you said, kind of the the tedious line by line business stuff. So anything I didn't already know about before, I learned in that program. Um, but yeah, those are the main things. Yeah, that and, and I think it's important to note because I have conversations all the time. People are like, okay, I got this idea, but I literally don't know where to start and one thing we talk about like okay we just talked about like money holding people up like mm -hmm. can I monetize this but the question is not only can I monetize this but am I set up properly to get the money mm -hmm. you know what I mean like am I positioned well for when I go have the conversation people to take me seriously that reminds me I also did get a business checking account yes um with the the bank that I already had my personal accounts with now the one thing I would do differently that I didn't think about was I was also trying to get a business credit card but I had already quit my job mm. Couldn't do it. I was fine. Cause, and I'm thinking like, because my credit score was like 760 something. So I'm thinking like, okay, most most banks, Don't money be folks. that like you better than this. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, my good too, I think. I had a really good, I typically had really good experiences with banks and money. Yes, yes. So I didn't think twice. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to give me a business credit card. But I didn't think about the fact that the actual income had been cut off and that's what they had mm -hmm. to look at, not my history. Yeah. Um, but I just got the business checking account and the business savings account. Um, Immediately. Oh, I w the other thing I did, really, like probably a week or two after I quit my job, I went to a home buyer seminar because I knew I wanted to buy a house and I knew it was going to be different for me. And right. so went and got made connections. Um, I want to say that was also through Operation Yeah, Hope. Operation Hope. They have some also great programs. Yes, they, mm -hmm. they did. And so it was a very small group of us, learned everything. I was like, okay, I need... They're going to want at least two years of my tax returns. I'm going to have to have been in the business between two to three years. They gonna, I knew all of that. And so... Three years in, I hit up the real estate agent I met at that uh, mm -hmm. um, program. We we it took some work, baby, but yeah. I got a house. Yeah, come on now, because I knew I'm 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 type A. I ain't no like that. Mm -hmm. Like I I'm a, I planned out my, my entire four years of college, my class schedule, mm -hmm. and an Excel sheet. Uh, for, so when I used to meet with my academic advisor, we used to just kiki because it Cause really wasn't knew, much to talk but about. I, but I think though we have to. I think that's a good point. It's important to realize that some of the things that we're doing now, when we're not entrepreneurs, not in business, those skills are transferable. Mm -hmm. So it's important. Organization was important, mm -hmm. right? Knowing where you want to go, even in college, it translated when you were a business owner. Because in order for me to get my house, in order for me to grow my business, I got to know where I want to go. Yep. So even to like look at what skills you have that are transferable. Mm -hmm. That you can utilize not only in work or, you know, your everyday dealings, but that also transfer over to you being mm -hmm. a business over and business owner and having to navigate all these different spaces. Yeah, just do an audit in general because I was able to identify some of my strengths, but I could identify my weaknesses, which was why I knew I couldn't multitask. Mm. 
that, that was never me. Part of the reason I planned my entire college schedule out the way I did is because I could never take more than 12 hours at a time. I need a, I need a certain amount of time to do nothing in order to be productive. So I went to school year round. I took class in the summertime. Now, some of my friends and stuff made it did 15, 18 hours, fall, su- spring, and then did nothing in the summertime. That might have worked for them. I knew it wasn't going to work for me. I graduated with a fall because I know my stuff. That's you know what I'm saying? But when you know your weaknesses, you're able to accommodate them. So mm-hmm. that's what I did. You know, if I know I have to have a certain amount of time to do nothing, that means I need to charge a certain amount for what I am doing. Because mm-hmm. I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I've never been a workaholic. I've never been a grinder. I've never been a hustler. I've never been a sleep when I die type. I sleep every day. Yeah. <laughs> I need 10 hours. At least it, it, what? That's every day. Amazing. So, ten, I mean, is it all in one time? Is it in blocks? How do you do If that? I can get it all at one time, I try to. Now, that don't mean I'm always able to just because, but yeah, I'm I'm asleep. I've, I never subscribe to the hustler, grinder, yeah. Yeah. never me. And I think that also helped me because I also presented myself immediately as a business. I was never an entrepreneur. I mean, technically I was an entrepreneur, but I wasn't a a, a freelancer. A freelancer or um, a sole proprietor. Hey, I'm Kayla. I'm here to do a side I business. own Don G Media. Yes. I used to address all of my emails about Don G, G Media as we when it was just me, horrible. Um, because I was ne- I I never wanted to be that. I, to be honest, which didn't want to be the face of it. Either. If I could have just built this thing mm-hmm. and let it go, but obviously being having personal relationships is part of it. But yeah, from jump, you at any point you wouldn't have known whether that was one person on Donji Media's team or, or eight. Because mm. I always carried us from the very beginning. Because I, that's why I, one of the first things I knew when I started my business was that I wanted to hire somebody because I had heard a stat, and it was, was probably in the um, Operation Hope sphere as well. Somebody I heard speaking about like black businesses and how so many of us are sole proprietors mm-hmm. and what we could do to the unemployment rate if all of us hired at least one person. Just one person. Just one. Just one person. And I was like, gonna be me, that part. And also, when I was in school for film, we had to go to Los Angeles for our internship. It was just literally part of the curriculum. And I did that. And I came back. And everybody was like, why are you back? And I was like, I hated it out there. They ain't got no grass. Um, but it was like, surely you moving to Atlanta. I was like, I ain't going over there either. And they're like, why? And I'm like, I can do whatever I want to here. Like, that's what L.A. showed me. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing out there but the banks. I can do what I need to do here. And I plan on doing it here. It's plenty of space and opportunity. But also, the reason I had to go there is because it ain't nothing here. That's only going to change if somebody stay. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. I was like, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to build a company. I'm going to be able to hire folks. And then hopefully folks won't have to leave to get a job in this field. I so love that. That was from rip, from jump. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what we do. I love that. Because, okay, so we're talking about how you present, right? And so there's this thing, too. No shade. First of all, I love us. For real. For real. Okay? But there's this thing when we start something, we think mm-hmm. that everybody mm-hmm. is required mm-hmm. to support it. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't buy my candle. Well, I don't need your candle. Mm-hmm. I know you my cousin. Right. Now, I'm not saying I won't support you. Right. But sustainability for a true business, you only got so many family members. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you really have to launch a thing as a legitimate entity. Like, how you present is important. You're still making it. You're still figuring it out. But to your point, listen, I got a signature at the bottom of this email. Right? Like, when I'm talking to you, I am talking to you as a business owner, not like, give me a chance, give me an opportunity. Because there's something about that, like, you don't mind giving people an opportunity, but you love giving people your money who you feel like know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And as business owners, we don't ever want to be a, a chair, people doing us a favor. Right. Because that's that's, that's not, not going to sustain plan. you, yeah. right? That's that's not a business. My favors are not a business model. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's going to be a limit to how many people are going to support you because, you know, right. since she's so sweet, right. that her cupcakes taste good. Right. And, I, and I, I usually make this distinction, too, like, when I'm consulting people. When they'll talk about, like, because, you know, we love food and beauty and all those different Mm -hmm. things. But I'm like, what's the difference between you making cupcakes and sprinkles that has 15 locations on the West Coast? Y'all both making cupcakes. Mm -hmm. But there's a clear difference in how you present the product Mm -hmm. and the distribution and the marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, most of the time, it's a lot of more access to capital. But even with the lack of access to capital, we still have a responsibility and we still can show up a certain Mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that segues, too, to relationships, right? So it's like, okay, I'm taking a bet on myself. I go ahead. I do everything that needs to be done strategically to make sure I have a sound entity. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for me to leverage relationships. And I think, too, sometimes people think, okay, you have to be an extrovert. 
you know, to be out there. Like, well, I don't like talking to people like that. And it's like, you don't have to, but mm -hmm. you better know how to sell something, baby. Yeah, and, and I think, too, for me, it was just being about my business, right? Like, mm -hmm. when I was talking to my professors, it wasn't ever, because I'm talking about I'm friends with them. Mm -hmm. Like, we still kick it. Mm -hmm. um, it was never like, oh, I'm trying to get in good with them because of a grade or because yes. I want to use them down the line. Yes. I, I'm an old folks baby, so I just was naturally interested in grown folks because I you can always learn so much from grown folks. Mm -hmm. But when you are somebody grown folks like, and not like because you fuck because I am funny, but like smart about my business, like they know, it, again, if I tell you I can do something, they 100% trust and believe I can get it done. That is what care. So it was, it wasn't just the, the number of people I knew or how they knew me. It was what they knew about me. Mm. And so I think that, that was what carried me. And then just also I'm spiritual, you know, I believe in God. And so one of the things I did, you mentioned taking a leap. One of the things I did right after that, actually the summer, right before I started my, my business was I started a small group at my church called taking the leap. And I was like, if I got to talk myself into this, I'm going to take a few folks with me. Yeah. <laughs> y'all can do y'all stuff. I to play it by myself. Y'all can do it too. Um, and so there were a series of things I did that I felt like was just me doing my part in terms of the preparation so that God could take it and bless it. Right. Mm -hmm. I knew it didn't necessarily have to draw a direct line between that action and, and me being successful, but it was me showing, a, basically a show of good faith. So yeah. I remember a while back I saw Ming Lee who used to do hair, but now she owns like a beauty conglomerate. But one of the things she said in early days was she used to, when she, I think she moved to Atlanta, she was like, I used to go outside every, every day with 500 business cards and I wouldn't come back home until I handed every last one of them out. And of course I wasn't going to do that. But that, that sentiment stuck with me like, what are you doing though? To expand your network. Like, what are you doing to expand your reach on a practical level? Like, it may feel like it's going to kill you, but it's not going to actually kill you. So I did. And I still remember very vividly the day I had identified a couple of small businesses just around the city and was stopping in and going to talk to the owner and giving them my business card, mm -hmm. just shaking and being like, oh, my God. And none of those turned into work. But it, to me, it was the show of faith and in, in, in the effort that God was like, all right, you ready? And I think it's stuff like that, like, or just being cautious of how you show up, period, right? Like, I'm funny. I'm goofy. People tend to like me. I think you can also tell that, though, that, like, I'm serious. I can get mm -hmm. my stuff done. And so places, situations where I wouldn't have even thought about something business coming up, people remember those things. And so they're they're likely to bring you in. And like you said, it wasn't – fortunately and unfortunately for me, I didn't sell a service that I could convince my cousins to buy from me. Right. That I can guilt my cousins into buying right. from me. Right. My daddy still can't really tell you what I do. You know, mm -hmm. I have one of those things. But also, I knew from jump it was going to be B2C. Mm -hmm. I'll be real with you because I hate people, bro. Like, I used to help not hate people. event planners do, like, parties and stuff. And so, basically, you know, like, I never did the personal photography. I'm not at your wedding. I'm not taking pictures of your baby. I'm not, I, I, from jump, I, you talking about knowing what you like. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm B2C, period. So it didn't, I, I didn't have a reason to be trying to get folks into buying from me anyway. But it also meant I had to approach this thing completely differently. Yeah. I had to be a business. If I'm trying to convince a business to pay me for a thing, I got to show up differently. But I think, like you said, like there's a difference between this thing I do on the side and these franchises on the other side of the country. Y'all do similar things, but how you show up does make a big difference in terms of how people perceive you. Absolutely. Which goes into the branding and the marketing. Like when we talk about what your visual brand elements look like, part of that is just playing into the illusion. Mm -hmm. Can people trust? Yep. If you invest, if it even just looks like you've invested money and thought yep. and consideration into how you are presenting to the world, subconsciously that's reading to people as, okay, I can trust them. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a real thing. Legitimacy, building legitimacy, having a website that's functional, showing up on social media, proof that you're real. Yep. Right. Th those are things. I mean, if you if you just think about how you vet a thing that you maybe don't have a direct connection to, most of the time, a lot of the stuff is word of mouth, which is why real life, like on the ground relationships, I feel like, especially post COVID, we've super glamorized these digital businesses, mm -hmm. and most of us completely neglect where we are. Like you can build up a very strong customer base right here where you are. Yep. And most of us neglect that because we on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said, my first gigs were local because of yep, people I knew. Yep, yep. And those local connections got me my out-of-state connections. Because it only take one or two to... Where well, about I know somebody in Atlanta? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think, you know, when, you, when you're when you talking about the digital space and, and 
and people having to go vet you as a source, they looking at stuff like that. A- absolutely, girl. So it's like three points in my head. So one, you talked about making the leap and starting to do things in preparation for your next. The thing I want to pull out from that, I had um, an uncle tell me one time, he said, God blesses effort, not just good ideas. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes since we have the idea, we think, oh, okay, I got the idea. But it's the effort, mm-hmm. right, That's that provides the jet fuel and the momentum for where we're going next. But then, too, you made mention of, and I think it's so important, we cannot neglect our reputation, right? You cannot. You say, hey, it's not the fact that people knew me. It's what they knew about me. So... Even when you're building your brand, and, and I, I, we are going to kind of jump into that with the time we have, you know, because a brand is not just your logo. Mm-hmm. Bong, that part. But, you know what I mean? When we jump into that, it's like, but what is your pers- like, personal brand? Before we talk about a logo, before anybody meets you, and I, and I asked the client this one time, if you were not in the room, what would people say about you? Mm-hmm. What do you think people will say about you? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's key because now when I see Kayla has started a company, I know Kayla to be a person that's honest. Mm -hmm. I know Kayla to be a person that when I ask her to get something done, she always turned things in on time. So I feel like those same character traits will translate to Kayla's business. Absolutely. But if you show up crazy and then you turn around to that same audience or that same group and you... Boy, you better go on somewhere. Right. You falter, you shaky, you you wishy washy. People assume that's gonna make its way into your your business. So, but it's true. Like one of my homeboys told me, he, he he was telling me from jump when I told him I wanted to quit my job and start my business. He was like, you know, my my advice would would normally be no, but he was like, Kayla, if anybody can quit their job, cold turkey and build a bus- business issue. Mm-hmm. He said that from jump, mm-hmm. and even now, you know, in the places where he's been, where he's been able to bring me in and get me, you know, um, relationships with some of the companies he's worked with, he he always tells me he's like, Kayla, I go into them and I tell them she is my homegirl, mm-hmm. but I'm not lying to you, she bought it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people get places nepotism, and I think nepotism is great. But a lot of times, it do just because you know somebody. Mm-hmm. Right? It, you you bringing them in off the screen for y'all, not off the screen for they work. And he was like, I was always trying to make a point that, yes, she is my friend, but she is also brilliant. That part. And she going to get it done. And I think that, and then what people know about me being funny, being goofy, what it turns into is somebody that's approachable. Mm-hmm. Somebody I actually enjoy working with. Not somebody who could just get the work done, who I like being with. Right. I have clients who be with me for years. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, old folks, baby, I could break it down to you. You know, I didn't I didn't tutorial many folk over two different three cameras, like, okay, press that button up there. Mm-hmm. I can break anything down to anybody. And I don't have no I don't like the gatekeep. Yeah. A lot of times, especially in the business, I mean, especially when you're talking about building websites or doing stuff on digital, it's real easy to like what we, we call it like work security, job mm-hmm. security, build stuff in a way that's so complicated or even share it with your client in a way that's so complicated that they are reliant on you because they don't understand it at all. From jump, it's everything we're doing. I'm way too much information. This is this is every password to everything, every bit of software. Mm-hmm. You got access to it. So that if you were to leave us tomorrow and go to somebody else, you would have the tools you would need to give them so they could pick this up and run with it. A lot of folks don't do that. But I those though I mean, I'm a self sufficient person. I want everybody to be self sufficient. And I mean too, that that's also part of customer service, mm-hmm. right? Because by you not withholding information as a, a customer client relationship, I can trust that. Mm-hmm. I can trust that she's not trying to make this hard for me. She's not trying to take my money. She's not trying to swindle yep. me. She genuinely cares and understands. Because in you saying that subconsciously, what you're saying is, if at any time this isn't working for mm-hmm. you, I want you to go find what's best and know that because I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. If I feel like, and which I've done, and, and that's something me and my homeboy was also talking about, like the, the part of business where as you grow and scale, you have to leave some folks behind. Mm. We don't always do the best job of handling handling that graciously. Got you. A lot of times we end up creating bad experiences for people. Mm-hmm. You have to be tall enough in who you are and what you're doing to be like, I don't think we can, I don't think we can serve you anymore. Or what I've had to tell people that I've had to part ways with is just that we are no longer able to give you exactly what you need. Yeah. Because I can see how far you can go. And that's the other thing, too. I do genuinely care. Again, from jump, I'm just, I'm playing this role right now. What I'm giving you, you should be able to take and run with for as long as you want to. And I don't feel like you owe me your, your, you know, business. Look, we've reached our capacity based on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You need to... And this is the direction I think you need to move. 
yeah. this is everything I could possibly give you to help you go over there. We don't always do that, though. We just start adding on new clients at higher price rates and then start talking to our, our day ones kind of crazy. Yeah, like, you ain't got no money. Y'all want to pay. You know what I mean? And that's not cool. Mm -mm, that's, not. that's not cool. But again, that's another part of being honest with your clientele. Like, hey, guys, so right now I, I love what we were able to build together, but I can no longer serve you at this rate, this capacity. But here are some other people, service providers, I think would be perfect for you. But if you ever need any insight, please know that I'm here. And that, and that, and again, even though you had to part ways with them, when they know somebody else who is who can take on what you now could currently do, they're going to share that, right? That's building that network. But again, it's about not only who knows you, but what they know about you. Mm -hmm. And then also it's about your customer service. That is so, the customer service is so important because it is the difference between somebody hiring you and somebody else. Especially nowadays, every market is flooded. Right. Yes. So it's not about talent and skill that's making the difference for people when they're deciding which way they're going. It's how they feel about the mm -hmm. person they're they're talking to. A lot of times customer service has a lot to do with that. I have had and every time it blows my mind, I have had referrals from people who have only gone as far as a discovery call with me, right? As they never signed on for a service, maybe they couldn't afford it or whatever the case may be, but have referred other people to me. Yep. And it was because you asked me questions in our first conversation that nobody even asked me. Like you, we talking about the website and you asked me about like the, the history of my company and I had talked to other companies and they never even asked me my last name. Mm -hmm. Like just a, a different approach, a different concern, a different care, different customer service goes so far that people will, like I said, I mean, I'm thinking like, how can you refer me to somebody? You don't even know how well I do the work. We never worked together, but they was like, listen, I enjoyed that conversation. It's, it's, it's customer service. So I think too, even when we're thinking about building businesses and our ideas, we need to have our plan, right? To become a, a fully functioning legal entity so we can get the money, get the contracts. We need to understand how to leverage relationships, but we also need to think through a customer service strategy, right? When you think about your brand, it's like, okay, how do people identify me? What do they think about me? But really also how do I want to make my clients feel? Yep. What's the experience I want them, not just public facing, but what is the experience I want them to have with me? Your and, grandmama and, also said that, didn't she? You know, people, she did. People, you know, may not remember what you said, but they remember, remember how, how you feel. they made you feel. Yes, I did. she was an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. um, and so that part, you know what I mean? I think like we have to also think about a customer service strategy and and you going above and beyond is not you being a simp. Like you going above and beyond is caring about your business. Like I remember, I think I told this story one time before. So, you know, we operate a co-working space and for some reason we, we ordered the ink and the printer. It wasn't there and we had a member show up and she came to, just to print mm. because she had an interview to go to. And when she showed up, she was trying to print and I'm like, oh my God, we forgot the ink. So I wasn't going to be like, oh, well, so I went to three different businesses in the rent. I was like, how much time I got? So I got 10 minutes. I went to every business, printed out two copies because and told her to go in the car to wait for me. And I'm going to bring her what she needs because that's what you do for mm -hmm. your customers. They need to know that you're going to show up for them no matter what. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you and when you show up for people, your customers, they show up for you. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so I think it's important to also build into, because I think there's even this part of customer service and branding that might not even like, you know, a connection that people might not yeah. even talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and that's why, even though I own a digital marketing agency, I talk so much about the real world. Like when I'm talking to clients, I'm like, what I'm doing for you online is only, should only really be an extension of what you're doing in the real world. Yes. And if you're not doing nothing in the real world, baby, it ain't much I can do for you. I don't. I can't bring. I can't pull nothing out of thin air. And I think again, we are we're especially post COVID. We're in a world where just because you're good at something don't mean, don't mean you need to have a business doing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may need to just be the the VP of some some somewhere else doing it because that's where customer service comes in. Not everybody, and it ain't even so much that everybody ain't built for it, but everybody also don't have a heart for it. Yeah. Like, and that's okay. Know your scrimps. You know what I'm saying. And if you need to be working somewhere else, do that. But but yeah, I mean, I think. It plays into your your actual brand, like how people feel about you, the in overall experience. So when they actually talk to you, first of all, how they can get in touch with you, does the contact form on your website work? Um, uh oh, does the email is the email at gmail.com. Um, those things, those things play a part. You know, those things play a part. But also when they do get you, what is that process? And I think one thing I, I've noticed, because I spent a year, hmm, probably what, 2020, 2019, you know, once you 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 start off, you you open to everything, right? Right. 
Then you're like, oh, uh, uh-uh, we got the real this in. And then, of course, some of us, like I did, overcorrect it. And I was like, I'm only doing these things. Mm-hmm. And if what you want don't fit into it, you know, we ain't got no space for it. Um, and then, of course, have since opened back up. But what I did in that time where I, I closed things off was I was running business for me. It was no longer about my clients. It was about me. What's efficient for me, what's convenient for me, what makes me feel good. Every every service, every interaction was about what is what's best for me. And that showed itself in revenue and other things, just overall experience. But then I realized, like, oh, as a business owner, if there's a problem I'm experiencing, it is my job to figure out how to creatively solve it on my end. A lot of times, if you are, you know, if you find yourself being real restrictive or you find yourself trying to cut off ways for people to get in contact with you, um, you know, like, they got to go through this form. and they got, mm. You probably aren't working with the right audience. And that's usually what it is. And so when I say it's my responsibility to figure out the problem and solve it, that's usually the problem. Okay, well, how do I need to present myself? How do I need to position in this company so that I'm attracting the people I actually want to work with? Because it's not the fault of the folks who, you know, maybe don't have enough money for the service. It's not their fault. Yeah. If they found their way to me and they felt comfortable with me and they felt like I was the right choice, that's on me. Yeah. And if that's impacting the experience I'm having, that's also on me. Yeah. But that's something, you know, you got to learn as a business owner. You Whatever you're doing, it is in service of whoever's buying. That part. And yeah. you need to add like it. That part. And I think, too, you made a very valid point of also recognizing maybe you're talking to the wrong people. And, and there's that part, too. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you're talking to the wrong people and maybe you're the wrong person. Maybe you're the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? So maybe there's an opportunity for you to look at your services and your offerings and say, okay, well, maybe I'm not the right person for this or I'm not talking to the right people. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I want to go into the lightning ride. <laughs> a lightning I wanna, ride. So, okay, so you own a digital media company. Mm-hmm. Name off some of the, the services that you offer. Sure. And how you support your clients. So we do brand development, marketing strategy, social media management, content creation, website design. So those are the primary things. Now, a lot of stuff happens like breaking off within those, but those are the primary things. And we work with, um, like I said, other companies. Honestly, mostly nonprofits. Nonprofits, and at this day and age, nonprofit adjacents, because there are some for profits who buy who 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 got a, a larger purpose, right? Yeah. So we do really well with those folks as well. So anybody who's connected to something deeper than the service they're offering is typically who we work really well with. And I like to say we help folks create a digital presence that reflects their real world impact. Because I know a lot of folks who who it for real. Yeah, it's just a lot of folks don't know about them. Yeah. And a lot of times there's just a disconnect between how they're presenting themselves to the world digitally and who we know them to be in real life. So for us, the goal is to how do we close the gap on it so that the litmus we see over here, somebody who don't know you across state lines can also sense that, feel that and realize that, oh, they're my people right there. I need to make my way over there. So that's that is what we do. OK, so I want to do like a quick lightning round. I want to do a few things on like marketing do's and don't. OK. OK. And then two, you be reading books. Audio books. Mm-hmm. OK, say so I, I had to get into audio books, too, because life just wasn't mm-hmm. the math was a math thing for me to kind of sit down and read in the podcast. Mm-hmm. OK, for sure. So we're going we're gonna to go through that, too. OK, so lightning round. Top three things business owners need to start doing when it comes to their marketing? Um, like aside from hiring somebody. That could be a thing. Um, that could be a thing now. To be honest, if we're talking about marketing, I would say business owners need to prioritize. Okay, that's one. Prioritize what, though? What are we prioritizing? Prioritize marketing? Not even just prioritize marketing, marketing tasks. If you are just now starting off and you have limited resources, you may not need to dump all your money into Instagram. Talking about ads. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. There may be other things you need to start with. But I think prioritizing so that you don't feel overwhelmed. Okay. So prioritizing. So prioritizing. Um, and I guess in a similar vein, identifying what you can and can't do. What you will and won't do. What you will. Because what you're capable of and what you got the capacity to do and what you're going to ask, two different things. I agree. agree. Um, and honestly, when we talk about marketing, I would say talking to your customers, the customers that you have, mm-hmm. they are data. 
Yeah. That's so you don't have to pull stuff out of thin air. You can literally use the words and the language of your current customers to talk to the new customers. Okay. So I, that, those would be my, I would say, my top three things. Okay. So what would be the top three? Stop. Just stop, y'all. Please, God. Stop right now. Well, one that's small and petty, stop putting links in the Instagram captions, bro. Oh, yeah, because we can't click. We can't click them. We never could. And it's like, you can't even copy and paste it, can you? Okay. So that's just petty. Um, stop being disconnected from the platforms you own. Mm, do you think we own too many platforms? I ain't even saying that. Like, you can't just schedule posts and, and go on about your life. And not engage. You got to be on the platform. Because mm. if you own it and you're paying attention to what's on there when you own there, you're able to create content that's more appropriate for that platform. But a lot of times what I see people do is like they just schedule stuff and whatever schedule they own. They make graphics that don't read well. T- on the, Like just totally disconnected from the platform. So you got to stop doing that. And honestly, all of that plays into the legitimacy too. Because if we can all tell, if you put links in your Instagram caption, we know that you either, you likely just copy and paste the same caption from other platforms. Mm-hmm. So you don't care. If you don't care, we don't care. Um, yeah. what's, uh, let me see. What else should they stop doing? That's good. Well, why you think about that? So, Well, I would say that stop prioritizing platforms like Instagram when your clients are in their 80s. Like, you can't just do stuff. For the flashing. It's like it got to make That's what sense. people are doing. Who I think it's the budgetista who be talking about folks look like businesses and aren't mm-hmm. businesses. I think that's true in the marketing area. Like, just because you got a lot of followers on Instagram, if ain't none of them followers your bias, mm-hmm. what are they there for? Now, nowadays, you can monetize that platform. But, like, yeah. Yeah, just a little. So, so, so finding a place, it's too, like, it's crazy on IG because I'll see somebody that have, like, 100,000 followers and then I'll click on their pictures and it's, like, 10 people like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, Stop my God. Stop buying followers. I know you're buying bots, okay? They all, they all out here squirming and worming and got these profiles. So, you know, like, to, to your point, like, choosing a platform, but it goes back to knowing your audience. You got to ask them questions. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about, like, your persona, like, creating that buyer persona, your 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 avatar, whatever it is. But you really got to know who you're talking to and where they are. Because you might not need to be on IG, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, like. Mm-hmm. And that's what we talk about, prioritizing. Because you can be on all of them, but if you got limited resources, if you know your audience, you may know which of those you need to start with mm-hmm. or put most of your effort behind. Mm-hmm. Then, you, you know, like I said, you got. 100,000 Instagram followers, no money, no clients. But it's lit, though, I guess. No, not really. It's not really translating well. I'm trying to get to the bag. The monies. You listen, um, I, 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 I ain't got to be popular. I just need to be paid, okay? I don't even want to be popular, okay? I mean, but you can't help with the like me because I'm probably one of the coolest people I know. Just but I, I think it's important yeah. to be self aware. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I ain't pretty cool. Yeah. But I, don't be, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't want to my business. Right. You know me, you curious. I don't want you but I appreciate you for sharing today. Of course. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for, for sharing, um, for just the transparency in your story. And again, like not holding back the things that you did, the things that you feel like you learned. So let me ask you oh, two more questions, all right? So I have I'm not finished my light round. I've been getting so excited. So one, I want to know what is a book or a podcast you would recommend for people to listen to or a book or podcast that helped really change like your perspective um, on business, something that's just transformative to you or what you're listening to right now that you think is good. And then the last question I want to ask you is around if you could do anything different, what would it be? But let's start with that book, that podcast, that is it transformative or something that you listen to right now that's really speaking to your soul? Um, in general, mm-hmm. I like um the Work Life podcast, the How I Built This podcast in general. But honestly, one of the, f- the books I read early on was The Originals, and I think it may have been by Adam Grant. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I don't know. It was just really energizing as somebody who was creative and had been working in corporate for a minute. I think it lit a fire up under me. So those those would be the things I would probably just the original. Okay, I don't think I heard that one. The originals, yeah. Um, And then what would I what would I do? What would you do differently? It's so hard. I am one of the people who I I only I only got one regret as of right now, 
in life, period. I don't normally regret things. Because mm-hmm. to me, everything leads to something. I just saw on Instagram earlier, somebody was talking about the parable of the the old man and the horse or something like that, where mm-hmm. his, he lived with his son. And it was like, um, they had one horse, the horse ran away. And everybody was like, oh, that's so bad. And he was like, well, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. And then the horse came back with two other horses. It was like, oh, this is great news because I don't know if it's good news. Or bad. Like that, everything leads to something. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know that I would do anything differently. Mm-hmm. Um, Honestly, I don't think I would. And I love that. I don't think I would. I love that. And so, because, again, it's all about, it's all about perspective. It's been hard. <laughs> let me let me be clear. It ain't easy. It has not been well. I am not well. You are well. First of all, now, you know we're big on words around here. You are well, but I think there's a conversation, and we are not going to prolong Yeah, we ain't got to. But there's a conversation around, and we kind of hinted at it earlier, what it takes to actually do this. Mm-hmm. I think the internet makes this seem so cute. Mm-hmm. And it ain't. Not at all. Some days I be in here, my eyebrow, one eyebrow, one other. I don't know what I'm doing because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But I think that the... It's trying. It's it's hard, trying. It's a certain level of resilience and determination. It's really this... It's, it's a weird process. And I really hope I articulate this right. But it's like this really torturous process that you have to just push through. And let me be clear, because we I like the words resilience, but I want to be clear about what that looks like, because a lot of people used to ask me, how do you still, how were you even walking around after your mama died, let alone running a company? Mm-hmm. All I did was woke up, y'all. I ain't do nothing else after that. I was like, God, this all I got. <laughs> do mm-hmm. the best I can with what I got. A lot of times, the resilience just looks like showing up. Mm-hmm. Just being there. And just ho- literally holding on. The holding on. That's the holding on, because yesterday, I was like... It because it does get better, but literally holding on until breakthrough happens. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times, there are long stretches of uh, this ain't. I don't think this it. But if if at any point you give up before you get to the to the promised land, so to speak, then you don't make it to the promised land. Yeah. So the the grit, the tenacity, is literally how long can like long suffer? How long yeah. can you sit in darkness? Yeah. And and then, and, and then too, I would I would even say this that hear, hear me, the promised land is fleeting. Because there's always a new promised land. There's always a new level. Right? The so, milk spoil. You you didn't know that until you got in there. Ain't no more honey over here. It's gone, Jesus. Right? Because you'll start and you like, ooh, if I could just do this. And then you get there and you like, God, well, okay, overhead. Okay. So now you got a new, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. always so really it is a journey of long suffering, but there's this part of you that has to know in your knower, in your spirit, mm-hmm. that this is what you are supposed to be doing. And really that is the thing that keeps you holding yeah. on when you like, this is ghetto. Yeah. Can I let go? Yeah. Document and document those moments of hope. Cause you do have to go back to them. Again, for me, very early on, the fact that I got to spend Every last of them 14 days my mama spent on this earth with her, I'm in the right place. I I can't go back to somebody's nine to five. Mm -hmm. My father is old and eight. Like, even if it don't make, there are certain things, certain, I got a house Mm -hmm. as a business owner. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that are just too, too confirming Mm -hmm. of what I'm doing for me to be like, this ain't it. So the, the question ends up in the darkness, is this the way? What am I doing that needs to be who a lot of times now, who do I need to be? That part. That part. My uncle Myron Golden, he says all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's it's this family. Girl, I mean it's some I come from good stuff. Oh, all about, huh? Listen, between my grandmother Maya mm. and my uncle M. Hey, well, Uncle G. You know, MG is what we call him. Oh. You know, it's who do you need to become? Who do I need to be? Who do you need to become? And to I think some rest of pro- okay, okay, all right, El Boogie. So it's who do who do I need to become in this process? So I think even when we think about starting, even when we ask ourselves the question, "How am I going to do this? How do I do this? How do I start this thing?" I want you to not only think about your marketing strategy, to not only think about this LLC, but I want you to think about who do I need to become. Mm-hmm. So that I can not only start the journey, but I can continue. The journey. Mm-hmm. And I think, too, even with you sharing all the things that happened in your story, you knew who you needed to be. And once you had determined that, 
it's like, okay, I know all this is happening around me and I would be justified to just go ahead and lay down and give up, period. Like, no one would question me mm -hmm. about that. But I have already determined who I need to be for where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's the, that's, from all of this, that's the question. Like, who do you need to become, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you understand that, getting all the things together, thinking about how you're presenting, how you're navigating those relationships, what marketing looks like for you, um... But yeah, thank you for sharing. I you did so well. <laughs> I appreciate you. I ain't cut up too bad. You're not too bad, friend. So thank you. This is another episode of the How Do I Do This podcast. Because again, when we're starting something, the question literally is, God, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. And so we want to answer those questions or that question tangibly with people who are not only aspirational but relatable and who are willing to share their stories in a transparent authentic way in a tangible way so that not only can we talk about how we did it but we want you to do what you need to do so you can talk about how you did it so thank you for joining us i appreciate you kayla and uh we will see you guys next time